All right, hello class, this is Mr. Heinrich. I have five minutes to explain this FRQ. That's all the storage space my phone has. So, all pleasantries aside, I hope you're doing well, but let's get right into it. We've got a cylinder rolling down an incline, and you can read through all this verbiage on your own. They basically give us the situation, and they give us a bunch of equipment with precision, and it makes us think, oh no, we have to really talk about all this precision. No, they really just want you to be able to pick the right piece of equipment for the right part of your experiment. We need to find acceleration in part A. Now, if we're looking for acceleration in part A, let's look down at my paper here. If we're looking for acceleration in part A, and this is FRQ1, uh, unit 1, I want to find A, well, part A first of all, right? I want to find acceleration, and I know I have things like stopwatches and clocks. That means I... I have time, right? And then they also say you have meter sticks and calipers. Well, that means I have equipment to find delta x. Now, what kinematic equation, when you think about the situation involved here, makes sense to use? Well, I'm going to take you right to it. It's this one right here, 1 half at squared. We know that we release this from rest, so v naught in my given list is actually 0 meters per second. That makes this 0, and if I solve for acceleration, I get a equals 2 delta x divided by t squared. Right there. Okay, so that's how you do part a in a nutshell. Part b says, okay, we need to figure out how to design an experiment. And of course, this is a it's a tedious process to write out a procedure, but they take you into it nicely by asking for you to fill out this table. So read through those instructions on your own. Again, I need to go quickly here, relatively quickly, that is. So quantities to be measured, quantities to be measured, the quantity itself, and then, of course, the, uh, the equipment, I believe, is this one right here. So I want to measure time quantity be measured is time, and I'm going to use the stopwatch, right? Obviously, you wouldn't use a clock. That thing is not going to take a bunch of time to roll down the hill, and you're going to want a little more precision than what just a clock with second hands can do. And then we have here displacement, delta x, measured with a meter stick would make the most sense, not a caliper, because caliper is limited in its range. Okay, so then it says, let's go ahead and create or write down rather an experiment. So I'm going to write, I'm going to read you what I wrote because that's what I have time for. So we're going to measure the length of the entire ramp for the first trial using our meter stick. That's step one. Step two, we're going to place the cylindrical object at the very top of the ramp and we're going to release that object while starting our stopwatch. When the object reaches the bottom of the ramp, we'll stop the stopwatch and we're going to record that time. We're going to repeat this multiple times. Write that. Write, repeat this step multiple times because they want to know that you're being uh, precise or that you're reducing your error, rather. Step two. Well, that was step two. Sorry. Step three. Pick a new starting height lower down from the previous point by 10 centimeters. Use a meter stick to verify. Mark this spot with a pencil. Repeat steps one and two for the cylinder. Step four, repeat steps one through three for six more starting points. Okay, good. Now, part C. Part C is going to ask us what quantities could be graphed to yield a straight line that could be used to determine the acceleration of the object. Looking down at my paper, I'm telling you right now, all we have to do is look at part A. Doesn't this look like a rise over a run to you? does to me. So I'm going to go ahead and say that part C for the vertical axis, because that's what it's asking for, part C1, the vertical axis, my rise is 2 delta x. Well, what does that make my horizontal axis? Well, horizontal axis would be a run of t squared. And then it says in part C2, how can the graph how could the graph be used to analyze the data and determine the acceleration? Well, boom, boom, to the slope of the graph will be acceleration. And I've run out of time, 
on my clock. So therefore, part D is going to have to wait. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great day.